Well, I think that uh, California has kind of always been kind of like the forefront of style and like Vans kind of had a, a footprint, as I would say, on uh, snowboarding and skateboarding and surfing culture. I was glad my dad didn't move to Nebraska when he moved from Boston. He landed in, you know, right next to Huntington Beach and that's where, you know, Vans began. You know off the bat if, if you get on a board, if you're going to fall in love or not. The feeling of riding a wave or skateboarding, dropping in on a big bowl for your first time, feel that once and it's like, you got to go back. It's the greatest feeling. Just a turn, I, I, you know, I don't even care, just go fast. You gotta get a little scared. The snow, the light, the mountain, the train, when all that comes together, it, it's a feeling that compares to nothing else out there. The landscape and the community of snowboarding back in the early 90s was something to me that was just fresh and new. There was really not a whole lot laid in front of us to, you know, no roads to follow or no outline to kind of gauge what we were supposed to do and the way we were supposed to do it. Snowboarding at that time was really strange. It was like a lot of trying to figure out of like how it should work. Should it be more like skating or should it be totally snowboarding? It was that fine line of balance that needed to be kind of found. Just watching Cardiel was incredible. Seeing him snowboard the way he did, but then the skating that I saw him do was just insane. I was actually really intimidated to meet him or know him. Didn't even want to know him because he was my hero. Having Cardiel up there, you know, someone who had such a gnarly skate background and a skate foundation, taking, a, you know, back three nose presses off of rocks, you know, stuff that today is taken for granted. But back then, when he was doing it, it, it was groundbreaking. Skateboarding, you could only push so fast or get only so much speed from some kind of downhill. But with snowboarding, you had all the speed and you were clearing gaps at way faster rates. So when you took it to skating, you think, you know, I could take this further if I got the speed. Getting a chance to ride with Roach and you know Noah Slaznik, who was also really a heavy skate influence and brought that skate influence to their snowboarding. You know the early Super Park at Squaw, the ASI quarter pipe. Uh, you know that was the beginning of park and rail setups, really, and just in general to for me in that time and place and snowboarding. How lucky am I to be a part of that? early days to help lay the foundation of what kids are doing now. The guys who, who started snowboarding 
they were the ones kind of like pushing the boundaries of, you know, we're going to take these risks and we're going to be like, we're going to be badass. You know, this race course is stupid. I don't care that my sponsors are going to want me to win this race. I'm going to do a method halfway through. Okay, just buy yourself a fine. Stay out of the fight. I'll ban him. I yeah. should ban him. You should join a band. Have to turn it down. I think that snowboarders are awesome people. <laughs> It gets me super fired up to ride with other good riders. That gets me pumped to, uh, to go ride and, and do something, hopefully something that's a little crazy. tweak things as hard as possible and I don't know, everything goes slow motion in my brain when I'm snowboarding, I don't really know how it happens. The early days of snowboarding, the equipment really wasn't there at all. So a lot of it was adapted and created out of necessity. My first pair of snowboard boots was essentially just a pair of Sorrells, you know, with duct tape. Duct tape them up and basically you're locked into the boot and just, just try to pull it. I don't know. <laughs> After we came up with the first boots, we knew from kind of previous history having Tony Alves and Stacy Peraltas and uh, guys in the skate industry, we better do the same thing in uh, snowboarding. In 95, I was approached by Vans to be a part of their new snow program and their new snow team. At the time, it was me, Palmer, and Cersei. You know, Jamie Lynn, the creativity. Um, just, I just remember, you know, designing the boots and the art that would come out and then the box and stuff. You know, kind of gives that same feeling of those early days when you could look in a catalog and pick your different material, print, or pattern to build your own skate shoe. When Vans came to me and wanted to do like a signature boot, it was like, yeah, because you know, all that culture of my, my whole skate background with Hasoy and Caballero and all my heroes, and then I get like a Vans boot myself and then all the unlimited shoes I want. You know, Palmer w had such a wild style and was such an individual character with his hair and his suits and the way that he expressed himself with the way he looked. The early wingtip style boots that Palmer had in the early days were awesome and they fit Palmer to a T. It's important to have a good boot depending on what you're doing, you know? If not, you're miserable. Then your feet hurt, you start yelling at your wife. It's bad. Palmer was, was otherworldly and so to be able to work on anything with him felt really exceptional and exciting and to create this product for snowboarding with a pro's real feedback and to be able to ride that and it work was unique and special. It's cool to be a part of such a great team and to carry on that history from the legends. As far as uh, Daniel goes, he was always loose. Like you never knew if he was going to make his flights. Like it was always. I remember the team managers like just like <laughs> he missed his flight again. Just all the chaos involved.
over 20 years, all the people that have ridden for vans, like everyone has their quirks and their all these different personalities. It's really cool to be a part of a company, Vans, that you know they're just promoting the lifestyle and you know to live and love like what you do. Really, I think what it, surfing and snowboarding and skateboarding—that's what drives you to it. That's what makes you love it. Is just uh, the essence of it. best feelings you can have is being on a snowboard, for me at least. Now people are so good, it's just crazy to watch. Like, it's unbelievable. It's like there's no way they could be having fun. I have a lot of respect for riders like Mark Landick. Just the way he's riding, you can tell that it's really natural for him to ride the backcountry, and that's like his, his own little backyard. Well, a big thing for me as far as trying to become a professional snowboarder, getting noticed, me and my buddies would essentially follow the van's Triple Crown around. I would consider like the Triple Crown, like what you won was, it was the equivalent of the X Games, but a much smaller contest series, you know? Kind of one look at it like uh, the US Open of golf. Anybody can enter and become a champion at that time. And so that's actually how I got sponsored. I qualified first at one of the Triple Crown Big Airs. Uh, Daniel Frank and Terrier were kind of battling out in the pipe. You know, Terrier had this just, like, he was a badass Viking pipe writer. Daniel Frank was kind of inventing new tricks. have farm systems like in baseball. We don't have college or you know semi-pro for football. So we hit put on events. Van Dorn would always throw in these random things like these little rail contests and there'd be money involved. Everybody was going off right off the bat. The energy definitely was like feeding everything. The Vans Cups were like pretty much the only contest that I actually looked forward to doing. You have all, all your homies at these contests. It never felt like super competitive or anything like that. It was always like super fun. Um, plus, when you have Van Doren there, fucking hanging out with everybody, cooking hot dogs, and you know, giving away money for like certain tricks and stuff like that. He had a way of putting a smile on anyone's face. I mean, he's still doing it today with all the sports, skateboarding, surfing. That's why I wanted to do those contests, you know? Because that vibe is exactly the way I envision like a good time snowboarding. Yeah.
Yeah, that's right. The judges don't want to see the sport go into like this ballet kind of gymnastic style of snowboarding. They want to keep the surf, skate, soulful style in there. It's all about good, solid grabs, good big spins and nice landings. You know, anybody can try all day and, and do some crazy trick, but if it doesn't look good, if it doesn't have style, then who cares? This is the first Vans high standard double big air competition completely based on style. The one rule throughout the entire event is if you spin over a 720, your run does not count. I'd say style is the most important thing for snowboarding, for, for skating. It's like Christian Osoy. You watch him skate anything, and it's done with power and grace and a fluidity that makes me want to want more, want to see more out of it. Big alley-oops like John John, like stuff like that. It's like, you know, he's so smooth upper body and it just transfers to what he's doing on the wave and snowboarding, skateboarding, the same thing, you know? And I just think uh, you go out and do what you do and love it and, and be natural at it. And that is your style. And if you're styly, you're styly. <laughs> I like the way you throw your lip. I like the way you just don't get. And the girl wants to be with me. Together, let's make it the room. All I know is I want to be with you. I remember the very first kiss. All I think about the years that I miss. Outside, the view bent down. When I see the guy is going on the ground. A lot of the style for me back in the day came from Christian Hasoa. He was like my idol. And I was skating a lot of vert at the time. You know, living up here in Tahoe, your, your seasons, you have the summers and the winters, so it was automatic to snowboard and skate. You hit a kicker out in the winter and you try to do the same backside air and, you know, transfer everything over from skateboarding. Palmer had a, an interview in ISM and he was up at Mount Rose and he kicked out this method off this mogul. You could see his pretty small jump, but just the way he did it was sick. And I put that poster up on my wall and I was like, one of these days, I wanna do it and I wanna do it like that. I asked my brother who is the best snowboarder in the world and he goes, of course, Jamie Lynn. Probably eight years old when my brother told me this and you know, Jamie Lynn method back then is still uh, as memorable as a Jamie Lynn method right now. Jamie definitely has a, a timeless style. To be a part and ride for a company that has so much love and passion for what they do, it's infectious and it makes me want to be a part of it even more than I am today. When I think of Vans, what comes to mind? So many things. First, the smile. To me, it's just authenticity. And something with roots. There's something about it that makes it so rad. Seeing people that are still riding for them, that have been riding for them for a long time, so it just shows the dedication Vans has to the athletes. Something to be said about that. They've created lasting images on me, you know? <laughs> <laughs>